Well, hello, everybody. Glad to have you here on Thursday night for Uncle's Throwback Thursdays. It's always a good time, especially right now. It's so dang cold outside. Got to do something inside. So I hope that, uh, hope you're here with me if you're up north where it's really cold right now. And if you live in Florida where it's uh, cold now. So uh, regardless, you need to come inside. We've got a great guest tonight on. Uh, one of my dear friends, the lovely and talented Delanne Bradley, will be calling in about 15 minutes after 8. And uh, I'll tell you what, you want to find a finer person, a better singer than Delanne. And for those of you who haven't uh, talked to her or anything other than just heard her sing, you're going to see a whole different side of her tonight. And she's just funny. Everything about her, she's just, she's such a good cut up and such a good sport. And uh, I played with her for about three years and just had the best time. So looking forward to having her on in a few minutes, about 15 after. And uh, she should be on. So anyway, getting going like we normally do. I uh, always show something that's kind of uh, special, I guess. And today was the day that the Challenger blew up in 1986. And I know a lot of you folks remember where you were when that happened. And, uh, you know, that was that was a big deal. We lost seven American astronauts on that flight. And uh, only lasted uh, about 93 seconds, I think, was was the deal. But, but a very sad day. But uh, speaking of that, I've had this for a while. This is a... Uh, G.I. Joe, Man in Space, and if you open it up, it has a space shuttle astronaut. This guy here, his name was, uh, was Robert Cripp, and he flew on the very first space shuttle flight uh, on, uh, out of Columbia. And uh, anyway, here he is again. Get a little shine off of him. Got his uh, life support system and everything in his hand. But anyway, uh, I met Robert uh, Crippen during the, the 1982 World's Fair here in Knoxville. And uh, I got to meet him and, and John Young. John flew on more space flights than, than anybody, I think. Uh, I forget how many he logged, but he was on a bunch. This was Robert Crippen's first flight. So uh, anyway, got to meet him. Uh, World's Fair was a great place. Put us in a lot of touch with a lot of people. Got to see President Reagan there. So anyway, it's a great time. I talk about it a lot, but it was a special time in my life. And uh, anyway, that's a tribute to uh, uh, the Challenger Flight uh, 51L, uh, January January 28th, 1986, that uh, we lost them. So anyway, just a little thing going on there. Uh, I always show you something cool I got for the week, and as, as I mentioned, I'm working on a big Dobro record. We got a lot of players going to be on this. We got like 20, 23, 25 players right now. And uh, anyway, let me click off a window that always wants to pop up here when I when I'm doing my show. I want to say a lot of uh, real quick. Uh, my buddy Allison Robinson. Allison was the daughter of Steve Gully, uh, my, my best friend ever, that we lost back uh, August 18th of this year. Allison's uh, Steve's daughter. I've known her forever. I'm glad to have her tuning in tonight. And my buddy, when I attempted to sell real estate, Jimmy Wooten, good friend on tonight, said, Rock on, Phil. Saw one of your Dobros downtown at the open mic. Nice. Will you buy it for me? Got it on the way for you, Jimmy. But Jimmy was my real estate uh, teacher. And uh, anyway, I didn't do that very long. I found out it was kind of out of my league doing that. But glad to have him on. But anyway, this Dobro record I'm working on, we got some great players coming in. We've got all the music just about together. And uh, already have a major label lined up. Going to take that. But got this in the mail from one of the players, one of my buddies, Steve Toth. Great player. Steve Toth right here. You see that? You see Steve. Anyway, Steve wrote this killer book. It's a, it's called Dobro Roots. And I've never seen nothing like it. It's the most 
he has cataloged about about every every dobro that's been made. He's it's just it's amazing what what he's done. I mean, it's he's going down for everything. All these different dobros that I just didn't I didn't even know it existed, and uh, he's really done a lot. This is a really nice hardback book. Uh, sells for about 60 bucks, uh, comes with a CD, I can't see, I think it's a 655 or 65, even with glasses I can't read, but anyway, this is one of the best books that I've gotten in a while, it's a coffee table style book, so if there's any Dobro players on there, you need to get this, really good, really good book, and, uh, Anyway, back back to a few a few things here. Uh, just want to mention how happy I am uh, to have everyone tune in. I hope you can hear me tonight better than last week because I've uh, tried to make some microphone changes and seems like I can hear better anyway than I could last week. So uh, anyway, Dell Land's going to be on here shortly, and we're very glad to have uh, Charlie Cushman on last week. Charlie did a great job. Uh, that guy's a walking knowledge on banjos and especially Gibson banjos. So uh, it was great having Charlie on. Uh, Dell and Bradley's tonight, and I'm looking, you know, uh, to find out who I'll have next week, which I'll always post that on my page. But uh, Dell Ann's going to call in. We're going to talk for a few minutes about a lot of stuff. And uh, me and her, her logged quite a fit, a quit. Dang it logged quite a few miles when I played in the band with her and uh, anyway I'll tell you the story on how I started playing with her it's re it'll be in my inspiration story it's really uh, a good story but uh, Steve Gully me and Steve Gully and Dale Ann we played and we traveled everywhere and you know Steve was always my roommate and uh, I miss that guy so much but he was he was such a good roommate, and uh, we had such a good run with Dale and Bradley. It was just, it was just incredible, uh, great times. But uh, going over here a little bit uh, again, uh, Ray Ray Collette, I think I'm pronouncing it right. Glad to have you on, and Jeff Miller and Joe Ross in Oregon, and uh, Jeff Miller, John John Young was the man. You were right. He's he, John Young's my favorite astronaut. And uh, a lot of people really didn't know John, but you know, John uh, John uh, walked on the moon. He flew Gemini. He flew the shuttle several times. Uh, if I was going to be in a spacecraft, that's the guy I would want at the controls right there, uh, Captain John Young, which he passed away not too long back. But uh, they said that he was the only astronaut that flew ever cat ever class of. Uh, of a uh, spacecraft he flew I mean he didn't you know he didn't fly in in Mercury but he flew flew Gemini flew the Apollo uh, landed on the moon flew uh, a bunch of uh, space shuttle missions so that guy was the real deal so I agree with you he's he's mine too he's my my guy and uh, Rick Lohr says enjoyed this my stories well that's great. You're going to really uh, like here in Dale Ann tonight. And Joseph Hensley, good buddy right there of mine. I mean, Joe's, Joe's a really, really good guy. So I'm glad to have you on listening in tonight, Joe. And uh, anyway, Dale Ann will be buzzing in a little bit. But, you know, we we logged a lot of miles, me and her and Steve Gully. And, and you know, it was never, there was never a time that I didn't look forward to going out on the road with Dale Ann and Steve. You know, I've been in situations where it just wasn't as much fun leaving. It's always hard going out for a few days, but with Dale Ann and Steve, it was like, well, you know, I'm not leaving, you know. Uh, it's not like going to work. It was like going and being with your, your other set of family because we became that. And I mentioned, you know, that... Me and Steve have been buddies since I was probably 11 or 12 years old. I was pretty young, and so he was, he was like a brother growing up. 
and uh, picking together and all that. So, you know, I've I've never been around a more funny guy than Steve. We got where we knew so much uh, little things because we watched a lot of the same shows and we could recite everything. And Steve was Steve was so brilliant. I watched him, and I mentioned this before, but we'd be in the room and Jeopardy be on, and he could just rip every category. So not only a great titter singer, but uh, uh, a very smart, brilliant, brilliant man. And for those of you guys that didn't know Steve, uh, you missed a lot because he uh, he was about as fine as they make. And I see his wife Debbie Debbie Gully on there. Hey Debbie. You know, we're always praying for you, Debbie, and I hope you guys will, will keep praying for her, too. She's, uh, you know, it's, I, I can't imagine uh, being being there, but she's come through like a tough cookie, and uh, it doesn't mean being, you know, being tough and, and things does not mean that, hey, you know, I'm getting better or whatever. It just means that, you, that you're learning to cope, and she's doing a great job, and and uh, we love Debbie Gully, and uh, we miss her. She's uh, she's moved. She's she's back in Kentucky, where she's from. But you know, nowadays with cell phones, people's not that far away. But so glad to have you on tonight, Debbie. And uh, your buddy's getting ready to be on here in a few minutes talking. So you know, I knew you'd tune in and hear and hear that, and you'll probably laugh at some of the things we'll talk about. Because Dale Ann's, Dale Ann's uh, she's a storybook. So I'm just scrolling down here. And uh, anyway, all right. Uh, let's see what time it is right now. We're getting close close to time. But anyway, let's talk, I was talking about Dale Ann a little bit. Uh, you know, the thing about Dale Ann, it was always funny. And I'll say this before she, she gets on the air. But... You know, we would drive a long way, and Dale Ann would, would nap pretty good. And the funny thing about it is no matter how much she had been napping, she could we could go to the hotel, get ready and stuff, and head to the show. And and I'm telling you what, it takes people a lot of people t time to have to, uh, I guess, warm up and get ready to sing. But Dale Ann could just come right out, and, and she could come with it. And, uh, you know, I think, I think she could sing in her sleep. She's one of the most gifted singers that I've ever known. And I've worked with, I was thinking tonight, I've, I've been fortunate to work with some great female singers. I worked with Claire Lynch. She was uh, one of the members of the All-Stars, uh, my band, for a while. And now she's in Canada, so uh, I couldn't afford to pay her gas back and forth to come play with us. So, uh Anyway, uh, we hired Robert Hale in at that time, but Claire Lynch is an incredible singer, and I met her probably around 18 years old, and uh, she had a band called the uh, Front Porch String Band, and which I auditioned for them playing dobro and banjo back when I could play a banjo a little bit, and got the job, well, was offered the job, but I, but I had to move to Alabama, and, and I enjoyed being home too much, uh, with my mom's cooking and all that good stuff, so uh, I didn't I didn't do that. But I was so g glad to be able to work with Claire later on, and uh, anyway, and I worked with uh, Sharon and Cheryl White with the Whites. They're two incredible female singers. So you know you had them in and you had Dale Ann. You got a pretty good bunch right there. So I've been very blessed. The Dobro really fits. Dobro really fits a lot of the. Uh, Music, especially the styles that Dale Ann and and uh, Claire sang and the Whites, and uh, anyway, when I left Dale Ann. She's got a really good dobro player right now. She finally got a good one, so we'll talk about that a little bit uh, when she comes on, and we'll find out who that is. But uh, Mark Eaton, uh, hello, Mark and Rex Webb, hello to you, buddy. <laughs> Let me scan down here a little bit. Says uh, Jeff Whitaker, how are you doing, Phil? God love Dale Ann, Sister Sadie, the whole uh, and all her, all the, the whole of her efforts. Yeah, glasses, no good. But yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit. I mean that uh, you know, Sister Sadie, they were the Entertainer of the Year 
at the IBMA this year, <coughs> and Dale Ann's no longer with them. She, I think she decided that she wanted to spend more time uh, with her band and working on that, but we'll talk about that a little bit, about her uh, leaving. And I think that's her right here. Let me check and see. Is that you, Dale Ann? This is me. Is that Phil? It is. How you doing, girl? Uh, honey, I were a hanging in over here on this side of the tunnel. How's everything in Knoxville? Oh, it's good. It's cold, just like where you're at. It is. My feet are so cold, I can't get them warmed up. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a sign of old age. You know, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're not old. But, <laughs> but, you know, I do the same thing. A lot of mine is, uh, I think, my dialysis and stuff, and uh, plus the chemo I've been on. And I, I wear, it's funny because... The other night I had an episode, I couldn't sleep. I was up to 5 a.m. <coughs> trying to go to sleep. And and anyway, I had these warm socks, and I'd put them on, and then they'd bug me, and I'd take mm. them off and put them on. And I counted by 5 a.m., I took them off 12 times and put them back on. So. Oh, my <laughs> goodness, honey. It's, oh. it's that old circulation, you know. It uh, is. It is. Fred. It, it changes it changes as time goes on. Hey, it does. It does. <coughs> Not to change. One minute. Debbie Gully just wrote something I want to say to everybody. Oh. Debbie wrote, and this is Steve, Steve's wife, said, Our family appreciates you mentioning Steve and keeping his legacy and music alive. We all love you. And Dale Ann, too. We love our best. And, buddy, I'll tell you, I'll tell you Dale Ann, I'm, me, I, me and you... Me and you, uh, we we have a big hole in our hearts. It's it 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 is, and and but they just ain't no adjusting adjusting to that. And it was, no. it's just she was such a such a part a part of us, like biologically, you know. He really uh, was. He really was, and Debbie too, you know, and the whole family. And uh, they are. It's uh, hard, ain't the word for it. It's you not. Know? You know, I think about all the trips we made and stuff and <laughs> how much fun we had and what a cut up Steve was. Those memories, a lot of times they've gotten me through the uh, last part of this year, you I, know, I, and I, it's times I'll never forget. I know, Dale Ann. You know, uh, I'll say this real quick. This is a little little story, but it's kind of really neat. Uh, a lot of you folks that know me, I had a stem cell transplant and I quit playing for like two years and anyway I started getting where I was able to get out in public a little bit so you and Steve were playing at WDVX and uh, I, I remember that and you you invited me out and you told me to bring my dobro and I told you I hadn't played in two years and uh and I hadn't so but I for some reason I brought it that night and you had me get up and play a couple and and I know I was I wasn't my best because I've been gone two years. But you, honey, you you wasn't missing a lick. Oh. You were you were all right on it. And people who have talent like you don't. Oh, Dale Ann, that's they, nothing keeps them down. <laughs> oh, Dale Ann, that's very nice. You know, and you you offered me a job that night, and I was ready to quit playing. And the fact that you offered me a job that night motivated me to be back playing again. And now I'm still playing, and it was you, all because of that night. Well, honey, it was it's it's been it it blessed both of us then and Steve <laughs> too because those those times that's some good music, we, some good music. Was. I'm glad we've got uh, videos and stuff of it that we can yeah. when we can. Uh, yeah. A lot of times you can't you just can't do it, you know. Well, I know I do this a lot. I was doing it earlier, but I go through sometimes and just find things where Steve's talking just to hear his voice. And, exactly. And it's exactly. Just, uh, and it's and it's a good and bad because you hear it and you, you it makes you happy but it makes you sad knowing that you can't you know uh, it is mixed it's mixed yeah. right right down it's like you you need to hear you need to hear his voice you know you do. and uh, and then you do and it's it's but you know it it uh, he's I know he's in a better place oh, than we, that's yeah we we know just from being around him where he's at I mean, oh no yeah. Doubt. Yeah, no doubt. But we're going to talk about you a little bit, Dale Ann. Uh, let me see what I've made myself a few notes. But okay, I, I, I don't really need notes with you. I know you so good. But but everybody listening, don't and tell 
tell us a little about you know where you were born and uh, well, how old not, you were. Not far from you, maybe about 56, maybe 60 miles at the most, mm -hmm. uh, over on the Kentucky side of uh, Cumberland Gap. And, of course, Steve was born in the Cumberland Gap, too, you mm -hmm. know, um, just born in, in uh, out right out of Pineville, Kentucky, on 119 going toward Harlan. So mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a little cutoff road that goes back by the mountain, connects everything up, you know, uh, just born primitive Baptist. Uh, my dad's primitive Baptist preacher, and we didn't have hmm. music in the in our church. You know, it was all a cappella singing. And right. of course, uh, a lot of us that that are our age, you know, didn't grow up with a lot of a lot of things that they have now, or even things that we had when we were adult. We didn't grow up with them, like right. inside water and <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. And powder rooms, if you, you might get powdered, it'd be a big clot of dirt drop on you. Uh -huh. well, you. You know, it's funny that you mention that because where we lived, we, we didn't have much coming up. But where we lived, it was all of our neighbors had water and everything. But we were like the only house on the block that didn't have it. And uh, I still remember, you know, we had we had one water faucet and it was outside. <laughs> and my mom would haul water in and boil it for baths and all that stuff when we was kids. And to wash, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, that didn't that didn't hurt us a bit because nah. I've thought of that every time that, uh, you know, we had water inside. I'd think of that every mm -hmm. time. I'm sure glad, sure appreciate that. Oh, gosh, yeah, <laughs> definitely, definitely. Uh, and then getting the air conditioning and all that stuff was a big deal. Oh, <laughs> you know? yeah. I bet you, like me, you bought a lot of them, uh, or have, your folks bought a lot of them uh, box fans from the Dollar General store. Oh, yeah, definitely. And a lot of people now don't even, you know, have never used one. And it's funny, they used to seem like they kept you so cool, but I know my air conditioning unit went out a few years back, and I bought some box fans till they got out of here, and it was like, you know, I just turned them off because they felt like they were blowing hot air. <laughs> so uh, yeah, now they they do. Maybe that's uh, maybe that's proof of climate change. It it really wasn't that hot back then. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> well, let's see, Dale Ann. Let's talk about a few things here. You've been nominated. You've been nominated two times for a Grammy, right? Two yes, two times. Once uh, for the solo album there on Pine Castle, Pocket, Pocket Full, Full of Keys, keys. Mm -hmm. and which you shone like a diamond on that oh. you played and and actually helped me put a lot of the material together too no I was and then there listening. well you did a great it was job. it was awesome and it was awesome uh and then one um just last year i guess with uh well maybe it was your before last and hell time's <laughs> moving uh with uh sister sadie exactly. we, uh sister sadie too was nominated well i can't remember did you go to the grammys for either one of those <laughs> We went with Sister Sadie went. <laughs> I didn't. We were home. actually playing. Uh -huh. We were playing, you know, uh, the first uh, on Pocket Full of Keys. Oh, yeah. And there wasn't any way for me to get out there. And you know how you've got to get your credentials and oh, yeah. all that. Uh, but there wasn't any way because we were in Boston. I think maybe y'all might have been there, too. I can't remember. You know, Seems like you might have been. I, I think that's right because uh, I had recorded on that album with you. And, yes, and then Matt come in, which we'll talk about him in a few minutes. But Matt come in after me, and I don't think he ever played. I guess you're talking about Joe Val, right? Joe Val, yes. Yeah. I think we, I think me and Steve played that one with you. Or I, I, did, or I, I did. think you did. I think you did. Um, and and that's good because I can remember that. That's that's uh -huh. quite <laughs> that's oh, quite oh, good. Oh, you're doing good, but that's pretty that's pretty uh, awesome. I wish you'd have won one of those. But uh, oh well, you know I'm I'm telling you, you look and see how many titles are out every year mm -hmm. eligible for that in our category. Oh yeah, and uh, I, I Lord the being nominated. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. You know. That just thrilled me to death. I don't know if I could take it. <laughs> if it was any better, you know. <laughs> uh, I, I got one with, with J.D. Crow on uh, yes, yes, Flashback. Yes. Yep. And, and I messed up. I didn't go. I wish I had them. But you know, then I said, well, I'll go next time. But that's pretty stupid to even say that because, like you said, you never you're ne you never know if there'll be a next time. Most times there's not. And I wish I had a went. But, uh, you know, oh, well. well it it's a big, it's a big undertaking, you know, especially but for four Americana bluegrass artists. It's, it's yeah. a big undertaking to get out there and back, you know. Oh, yeah. And uh, 
but it's 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 awesome you know i i I had never been. I'd been like everybody else. I think they used to air on Sunday nights every year. Yeah. And uh, if we'd go go watch it at some other place or whatever, we would. I wouldn't miss it. I'd do whatever I had to do, you know, mm-hmm. to get to see the Grammys. And you know, it's. I know you're like me. You think about that, and you can't. You can't believe that that's come full circle. I know. It's a. Uh, it's it's wild. <laughs> it, well, it really is. You didn't win a Grammy, but. You guys won Entertainer of the Year this year at the IBMA with Sister Sadie, which is a huge deal. We we did. I'll tell you, we did have a big old time out there at Los Angeles. It was funny with the Uber drivers and us mm-hmm. all with the big southern accents talking, you know. <laughs> and uh, it was quite funny. But, yes, uh, I was so proud of, uh, of Sister Sadie. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's one group of talented gals. Sure and uh, And I, I love them all. And... They're some of the funniest people. <laughs> we we crack up all you know all the time that we were traveling together. You know. Oh yeah, everybody in that group's fun, and we. Oh, and so talented. You and, know. and you know, with my band, uh, Gina Britt is playing bass with us now, and we've not had a chance to rehearse or anything because of the COVID, but we're very yeah. excited to have her. Uh, yeah, in. and we're we're thinking of Gina and, and her family. You know, she lost her mother a few days ago. Yeah, she sure did. And, uh, Yep. So we we are all of our thoughts and prayers and love her with her. She's she's a good gal. I'll tell you what. She's a hard worker and yep, she is. as talented as anybody I ever did see. Oh, there's you know? no doubt. Great banjo player. Oh, banjo you know? and bass. Oh, yeah. I'm sure anything. I've saw her play. Uh, seen her play guitar. Pretty mm-hmm. smart there too. You know. Uh, but I'm so glad that she that she's doing this with you all because listen, she she respected and loved the loved the uh, love steve and so it, yeah. it means a lot to her to get to to play at that spot and yeah. and she truly loves all you boys oh it's the same back at her you know uh i just think think she's one of the most talented uh people out there playing everything yeah and singing too but but yeah. anyway moving on now you're no longer with sister sadie uh, no, uh, no, we uh, 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 kind of was just going, you know, different directions and sure. stuff. Now I've got this new album sure. out, and uh, um, and that, of course, that could bring in to be talking about your boy there because wow, right. <laughs> that's all I got to say is wow. That's, he did that's where I so was, good. <laughs> that's what I was getting ready to say. Tell us the name of your uh, new album. And well, about. the the title of it is a song I wrote, uh, "The Things She Couldn't Get Over." is the title of it i love that song matt sent oh. me that uh one night and said dad i'm gonna send you this from the, from our cd and i swear I, I listened to it i listened to it five or six times then came back and listened to it again and well i i hope people uh enjoy it and i hope it it, it will enlighten yeah. you know it's it's we don't know people's struggles you know no, we and don't. uh so on the whole album those songs are kind of if there's a theme it's it kind of songs talking about walking in somebody else's shoes right. or you know uh uh acknowledging acknowledging things right. and so they all seem to turn out to have that theme and i tell you uh matt turned on mm-hmm. i was so i was so proud of him and a singer oh yeah yeah, he on all of them except falling down. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He's doing uh, as Ashby Frank singing uh, baritone uh-huh. with Kim Fox on uh, uh-huh. falling down, and he wrote that song. On I all the that. others, um, well, other than uh, another one, but like uh, ten cuts or eight cuts, he was singing that harmony with Kim, and and the bass. It, there's a gospel song called mm-hmm. After a While, and I I just I get I don't know it and it lifts me up every time I listen to it. He's doing the baritone, but I'm telling you, he is singing as good a bass as I ever heard in my life. He's, you know, he Matt was always kind of a sleeper, and I told, I told several people when he was coming along, you know, I said you need to check out my son. He's playing really good and singing. Yeah. Real, or, and I didn't realize what a good singer he was at the time. Uh, and I he, don't think I don't think anybody really realized, <laughs> but but they will if we ever get back on the road and this <laughs> this little devil ever leaves us alone. Oh Lord, it's uh, COVID. People, oh gosh, and people will hear him, and I'm proud of him. He's a good, great young man. I want to call him a good boy, but he's a great young man. Well, he thinks the world of you, and I know he's excited. 
to get back out, but because he, every time, you know, he's over here, Matt's funny, uh, he walks in the door, and me and my wife, Lisa, will be downstairs, and hey, mom, hey, dad, and then he goes up the stairs, and then <laughs> he's got one of my dough bros out playing it, Oh. and uh, anyway, I have to keep up with what he takes, because he'll take one, and, and I won't know which one it is, and <laughs> and I'll see him play it or something, but Matt's just, uh, you know, I'm really proud because, you know, when he was growing up, I wanted him to play another instrument so we could play together. Oh, but, yeah. But it right. worked out so good because he plays lots of other instruments, but Dobro was his colleague, I think. I, I think I think you're right. I think he's in love with it. I think, yeah. and he wanted to... I think he wanted to uh, walk in your shoes, and I mean, in a in a very well, loving, respectful way. Well, he's uh, he's made me very proud. Well, uh, you've done a great. You and Lisa have done a great job with that young man. Well, thank you, Dale Ann, and he, you know, we, me and Lisa have talked about. You know, we used to worry when he was out on the road traveling, but we don't worry when he's out with you because. Uh, well. You know, I know how uh, you are. We're we're like. Uh, well, you're like a sister to me. And, That's exactly the know. way we feel. You know, it, yeah. it's it's the bond I think the, some of us have in this uh, this area, East Tennessee, and where I'm at in Kentucky, buddy. Yeah. It's it's a strong one. <laughs> it, it really, it really is. It really is. But I'm I'm so glad he's working with you, and uh, and and like we said, with this COVID done. It's going to be yeah. good for everybody because we all need to get back out there and play again. Oh, we do. We sure do. And and we'll just keep faith and hope that that's going to happen because the world can't uh, – we can't do without bluegrass. No, they got, think they can, but they can't. They gotta have it. There's, <laughs> there's some other stuff. Now, you know, if the COVID wants to keep the rap out, I'm good with that. Mm. But, uh, I, you know, the bluegrass. But, hey, I want to read a few little things here, Dale. And okay. Let's see. Uh, P.J. Henderson says that I'm so thrilled to be listening. Many blessings to you both. And oh. my buddy Joe Ross said he's heard your new album, and it's great. Which it oh, is. You know, thank Joe. you. Thank you so much. Thank yeah, you. You know, Joe. And uh, Travis Brown said, I used to see you at the Festival of Bluegrass in Lexington, which I, you was there all the time. Right, yeah, we, we were there. You were there with me, and then yep. I was there when you was with J.D. and different <laughs> ones. You know, the first time I ever heard you is kind of funny, is uh, the old festival, the Red Mile, which they made the Red <laughs> Mule later on, you know. Right, but, right. But, you know, it used to be there at the horse track in, right. in Lexington. And I remember I, I was driving home to Knoxville that night, so when we got done with J.D., J.D. would never want to be last. He never wanted to close. He wanted to play and do his thing. So you guys were closing, I think, with the new Coon Creek girls. And, Probably so. Uh, and I remember going to my car, and I heard, uh, uh, I heard this voice that just blew me away singing Bobby McGee. Oh my gosh! And, and I wandered through all these cars, still carrying my Dobro in my suitcase, and I sat and watched that, and and I think that was your last song, and and. Uh, I was like, I can't believe I missed. I, I want to hear this something else. And you guys got like two encores, and I got to hear you sing two more songs. And from that time, you you were, you know, one of my very, very, very favorite singers ever. And, oh, man. Uh, and, and honey, I, I I so appreciate that. And you know, you know how I feel about you as an mm -hmm. instrumentalist and and a and a musical mind and and a friend because well, you you're a really good producer. I oh, mean, I if anybody wants that. tips or <laughs> needs some direction, Phil oh, can produce. <laughs> no, Dale Ann, you're the producer. You made some great records, mm. and uh, you know what you're. You always know what you're looking for when you get in there. You've always been been prepared. And uh, I mean, I know we did pocket full of keys. I didn't know exactly what we're going to do, but you already had it so structured that it made it so easy uh, because you could sit. You sat there and sang all these songs to us. And uh, it's a lot better than somebody like me that I don't sing. I used to till I started being around people who could sing, and I realized I couldn't. So oh, I, I've heard you sing some great baritone. I really have. Uh, uh, I must have been soundtracking it or something. But uh, mm -hmm. thank you, Dale Ann. But it was, uh, you know, when I got around people like you and, uh, you know, people that are real singers, that made a difference going in the studio because 
when you go in, you could sit there with your guitar and play the songs. And in my situation with the, the All-Stars, since I don't do this, you know, it's kind of hard to go in and say, I'm going to hum you, a li- hum you a line. And humming just don't come off as easy as playing it on the guitar and singing. And so it may, you're, you're really, you're really great at that stuff. Well, yeah. I, I, I am so thankful to get the opportunity to do it. And uh, thankful, of course, to have the wonderful people like you and Matt and, uh, and uh, our late friend Steve Gully and yeah. Debbie Gully, his wife, she's one of the best singers ever breathed the breath. <laughs> yeah. uh, you talk about, I mean, she, we did a song, Yesterday's Gone. I know you heard that. Mm. And I have heard it and, and had to pull over every time. You know, time. Dylan, that was the last song we did. And I asked Steve, we were down needed one song, and, and I asked him if he would sing that one because I was, when I played with Vern Gosden for a short time, uh, Vern did that song ever show, and I forgot about it. And Steve sung it, started singing it uh, with New Pinnacle. And, oh yeah, yeah. And I just loved that song, so I said, Steve, why don't you do that on the album? And uh, he sang it, and we we sat around. And we were thinking what we needed to do to that to make it a little bit different. And and I knew what a great singer Debbie was, and and. Uh, I said, Steve, why don't we get Debbie to come in and sing oh, that absolutely. part? And uh, Steve picked his phone up and he said, well, mm-hmm. I'm not going to ask her. He said, uh, I'm going to dial a number and you're going to ask her because if if I call her, she'll think that I put you up to it. <laughs> <laughs> and and that was just Debbie. Debbie is so, so She's great. humble. She's humble. And bless her heart, she she's is precious as she can be she's never oh, yeah. known how good she is but no. we all have <laughs> no no and that's good and i i was always hoping she would get uh, get started and going on that album and hopefully one day she will she'll do I, that. I hope so that that's something that i think about often yeah definitely definitely but you know uh she's got a lot of singing left in her so i mm-hmm. hope that, that uh, she'll do that but let's see let me let me read you a couple more here dale ann uh, oh okay uh, Jeff Whitaker said he shared this link to the magazine site and he hoped it helps. So oh. that's good uh, right there. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank Jeff. you. And uh, just some different people saying uh, uh, different things. Hey, Dale Ann, two of my favorite folks right there. Uh, Jeff Miller. Okay. Uh, hi, Jeff. <laughs> hey, Jeff. One of them is you. I don't know who the other one is, but we'll, we'll take it. But Dale and I, uh, oh, somebody wrote "Blackberry Summer." That's a great, oh, great song. That's a that's a sweet one. That is. that is a sweet one, and and so many of us identify with that. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. That's that's one of those songs that hits home. You know, it makes you mm-hmm. think about being little and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. while we're talking about this, a funny story that you always told was the one. Uh, about the word genre that you have heard, <laughs> and uh, and you, I guess at your age, you didn't know what jo- the word genre meant. Oh Lord, no, tell no, us, I had no idea. Tell, you know, I thought it meant hairstyles. Tell, I really did. <laughs> tell, you tell the story about that when you went down to uh, to uh, your what oh, my you, aunt, my aunt's house. Yeah, yeah tell, it was my. You tell that story. That's the funniest story. Oh, well, I didn't know, uh, you know, what that word meant. Of course, genre, I've had to really work on how to say it, too, since I've been grown. <laughs> but we went to, I went down, you know, to my great aunt, mm-hmm. uh, and I loved her better than anything. She was just precious. And tell it, and, like, uh, you, tell it like you did on stage, all the details. Know, yeah, well, okay. I walked in, and, and uh, <laughs> I got my first experience I, with aromatherapy. <laughs> Because I walked in there, and she was getting a, a lilt permanent. <laughs> if anybody <laughs> our age is going to know, that's, Lord have mercy, it'll run anybody out of the house. Worse. Yes, it'll kill a possum. Uh, yeah, and then on top of that, she was cooking mustard green. <laughs> <laughs> And that was that was, I believe, looking back now, that would have to be my first experience with aromatherapy. Yeah. Then I go home, 
And uh, I tell them, my mom, my grandma, I said, you know, ain't, ain't else she's getting a new genre. <laughs> they didn't know what genre meant either. So they went for that little old switch on top of the refrigerator because they thought I was saying something bad. But we worked it all out. <laughs> and you thought genre was a hairstyle, didn't you? I did. I sure did. Once, Never looked it up or anything. I just heard the word and thought, well, that's what that is. Oh, you know? we, couldn't, we couldn't Google back then. Oh, no. We didn't even have encyclopedias. You know, Google. <laughs> And I bet you're the same way. Google has saved me so many times when somebody oh. asks me something and or a word that I can't spell. And, uh huh. And I go, I'll go do it on my phone and come over to my home computer and and type it out like I knew what I was talking about. And uh, <laughs> it's made a lot. Google's made a lot of us dummies smart. Oh, uh, I don't know what what we <laughs> would do without it now. You no, know, <laughs> it's been it's been a lot of. Uh, 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 I mean, just in mind in your life, I mean, I remember the first computer I got when I first got married, the first one, and our father-in-law got us this little Texas Instruments that you put cassette tapes in. Okay. To hold your memory. The memory fit on a 60-minute uh, cassette tape. Wow. And it's, you know, it, it's funny how we've we've come to all this now. It is. Yeah, those are antiques now. Oh, you know, I know, you'll see I this know. stuff pop up on TV and it's worth whatever. Oh, I know. You're thinking, my goodness, I didn't oh. know they had anything but that. <laughs> yeah, and these video, these old video games are bringing so much money yeah. right now. Yeah. But uh, anyway, I don't mean to talk your ear off, but I just wanted to ask you what... Uh, what you're into, I know uh, you're into your band waiting on COVID and all that I, stuff like that. But are you are you working on a an, on an album, another album, or looking? well, I, I am uh, in the first uh, steps of putting together a, a gospel album. Oh wow! I hadn't done one in a long time, and uh, not really sure of how you know it may be a scaled down uh, traditional. Uh, you know, sound and uh, album. I love gospel music like that. Oh, you yeah, know. me too. And uh, but not really sure. But we're kind of in the first first stages of that. And then I've been doing uh, people been kind enough to uh, want a lesson or two. And I've been doing some of that and enjoying that. I've got some great people. I just love talking to them. Oh yeah. And uh, so just and just waiting for this stuff to be over. You know. Oh yeah. And and I and I'm hoping that. Uh, that it is. I mean, before long, we've been, you know, we've been over a year with this. And I remember being here at the house when it first came in on the cruise ship. You remember that? Oh, yes. And I've thought of all them cruises that, that, yeah. that we've taken. I was supposed to be on one uh, this upcoming month, I think, to Aruba. And uh, wow, uh, there's no way I will be on any kind of boat. Uh, no, right no. And it just seems like, you know, those times... We never thought of that. On, yeah. I know, Lord, we went on 10 of them, I guess. I know, and you uh, know, it's funny. Now that you walk around and it's just like people wearing masks and rubber gloves, it's just like a, it's it's weird, but it's becoming a normal look. It is, you're exactly right. When it first started happening, you remember them old Twilight Zone mm -hmm. episodes? It yeah. kind of puts you in mind of that, you know? Oh, I know, and I remember I was early wearing i'd wear from I mean, when it first started i guess i and i'm still very scared of it of course oh yeah but i remember i, I wore rubber gloves everywhere and and a mask and which you know i do really good hand washing now i've I've learned my system like if you, if i go to the run to the restroom after dialysis i'll go in there and i crank all my paper towels down about two feet of paper towels, then I go wash my hands and then grab that paper towel as I go out the door and use it to open the door. And if, if there's not a trash can there, I've been throwing my paper in the floor. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm if, the if, they, if, they, if there's not a trash can, there ain't nothing you can do. And you, it's more afraid of the germs. Germs yeah. are more it dangerous is. than a paper towel on the floor. <laughs> it is, but you know what? We've had to just learn a whole new way of living and... And I just think when this is over with, that these festivals we used to go to, and it's like, well, you know, got to go play Friday, got to go play Saturday. I think we're going to really look forward to this stuff again, just like we did when we were first doing it. You know. Oh, I, I, th I think you're, you're probably. It's a new beginning. It's, it's it been is. so long now. It has to be a new beginning because. 
yeah. So I'm hoping that 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 that'll happen too, and um, I hope we all get to work and have a good time and record and write and mm-hmm. and hug each other again. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I miss is is shaking hands with people and hugging people. You and don't realize it. You don't realize it till it ain't there. And no, and buddy, I'll tell you. You don't. You don't. And it's a weird feeling because. Sometimes you'll walk towards somebody to hug them and remember, I can't do that. Uh, exactly. You know? Right. And, uh, right. But it's just weird. But this is something we're going to remember if we live long enough down the road. We can look back and, and you know, uh, remind people that were little kids or maybe not even born about this. I mean, this is uh, this was a big deal. It was huge. Sure. Just like the like the wars. I yeah, mean, it's it it's been... Yeah, and uh, yeah. yeah, we'll have to make sure it's handed down so they know. Yeah, it definitely. But I'm going to read a couple other things people wrote here, and then I'm, I'm not going to keep you long, but uh, somebody wrote something about remembering boiling down used soap. Now, I remember that. Oh, oh yeah, you take all the little uh, pieces, chips, yeah, chips and pieces, and use it for laundry and uh, yep. and your, your skin, too. <laughs> you know, we, my mom would sit that stuff in a... Uh, Every now and then we would. My dad loved those ice cream pies. You know what I'm talking about? But, uh, yeah, spy, sandwiches and little sandwiches. Yeah, he loved those, but he loved the pies too. And you were supposed to defrost those, but we would eat them frozen because they <laughs> taste like the ice cream sandwich. Yeah. And after we ate those, my mom would take that pan and put it on our wood stove, our coal stove, and uh, put all the soap in there, and then. I put mailed it, she'd flip, sometimes it's a little pie pan, flip it upside down, and, and it was real pretty, you know. You have pancakes, soap pancakes. Pancakes, <laughs> right. Golly. You know, but I miss a lot of that stuff, even though the times were hard, they were good, you know. You're, you're right. There was, we had some stability of some yeah, kind, you know. We did. And didn't expect everything. Just... No, that's what's happened nowadays is everybody, you know, it's just like I was thinking today when, something gets a little old or something or or a little bit you know out of date people will throw them away or whatever and you uh, you know you think about these people that don't have those luxuries that could use that stuff you know? exactly uh my grandmother always said you know once we would would get eggs from the store and the date would be on the the carton there and mm-hmm. she i'd say well these are two days over and she'd say they'll let you know if they're not if they're bad <laughs> they'll let you know you won't have no no reason to wonder <laughs> i remember that all those times you know uh my brother can't work at a grocery store called the white stores do you remember that oh time? i remember them oh yeah and white yeah. and white way had all that good stuff white way it was like a little department store and then white store is a grocery store mm-hmm. and i remember my dad he he sent me into the store one time, and this is kind of the age, but he sent me in, and we knew everybody in the store because uh, most of them run the white store near me went to our church. Oh, so yeah. So I knew everybody. But the produce lady uh, sang in the choir with my mom, and uh, so my dad pulls up and tells me, go in, go in there and get me, get me a poke or get me a couple of pokes. <laughs> So I'm over there looking all through the produce because I remember Pope, <laughs> Pope growing up beside the road, you know. And uh, so I asked my friend, I said, my dad sent me in here for, for uh, said that he needs a couple of pokes. And she pulls out these bags. And I said, no, 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 not a bag. Oh, it was about, some kind of greens. Something. Yeah, it's like greens. And she says, well, we can't sell that kind of stuff here. Uh, I can sell you some radishes and I said, well, he didn't want radishes, so I go out back out to the car, and my dad's there, and he said, uh, did, you, did you not get me no pokes? <laughs> and uh, I said, well, they're they're out of them. He said, how are they out of, of those? <laughs> they got a store to run. And uh, I didn't know what he meant, and we talked for a few minutes there, and, and he says, uh, I remember my dad says, now, your mammy should have taught you this, the Pope's a bag. And I said, well, <laughs> well, she's my mom, but she's your wife, too, so you should have taught me. I didn't know exactly what it was. Right. But, but those were fun times. But Oh, they, w- they were. But I'm going to scroll on down here a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Because a lot of people, uh, Jeff Whitaker, I told you, said that he's, uh, said that Dell Ann is such a natural, gives me chills at times. So. 
Oh, bless your heart, honey. Yeah. That, yeah, I ain't thank you. Honey. That that's well, that's that's encouraging. That, I appreciate oh, that. You're you're awesome, Sandra. Uh, let's see, uh, Randy Randy Green. Good evening, Phil, and Jeff Whitaker again. That's my favorite. And uh, somebody wrote about uh, because he loved me. You know, that oh. one. So uh, anyway, I'm just flipping down through here, see what all it is. Somebody here says Dell Ann owes me a hundred dollars and she never paid me, but no, it doesn't say that. Oh, I, I was <laughs> holding my breath. I thought, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, well, Kim Kasky said she can't wait for the new gospel album. And, oh. Uh, and a friend of mine, Betty Edmondson, Barry. We went to school together, and she's been tuning in the last few weeks, and she said it all sounds really good tonight and enjoyed it. And, oh, yeah. Uh, let's see. P.J. Anderson said, I'm so grateful for the music that you both have put out. It brings comfort during these times, and we will all need healing when it's over with. Oh, yeah. I, that's so true. <laughs> that we'll get back down to the reason that for music in the first place. Yeah. It's if, yeah, and, and not be so critical of each other uh, on this oh. stuff, you know. Uh, Stuart Wyrick, i, I got to say this. Oh, that, I love that, man. Stuart's one of the best fellas I ever met in my life. Yeah, some banjo players, too, you know. Yeah, oh, they, there's no better. He's well, great. Stuart just wrote this, and you'll you'll know what he's talking about, but I'll explain <laughs> to people. He wrote, he wrote Cover the Hay. You remember that? Oh, my gosh. Well, you were with us a lot with Stuart. Yeah, yeah. We were all in the band together, and... He is a workhorse. I mean, yeah. the man oh, yeah. is works, works, work. Yeah. It's so responsible. Uh -huh. And, and every farmer. time we'd pass a field of hay where these bales were just out there getting wet and rotten, and he would get so aggravated. Oh, he, he would, get would so, say, he'd get cover so mad. them hell, uh, ba <laughs> How you say them? <laughs> hay bales. Co cover <laughs> them bales. Yes. And, and I remember uh, it was funny because we, we flew somewhere. And we come off the runway, and we're going up there, and we look, <laughs> we look down out the window because the plane tilted, and here's all this hay that's uncovered. And, oh. and Stuart said, I didn't need to see that here. He <laughs> said, on, on a three-hour flight, I did not see that. So uh, I, was, I, went to, I was in Germany a few years back, and as we went to camp, there was a field, and it had a whole bunch of hay that was uncovered and I took pictures of it and sent it to Stuart and Stuart says well said you know even those Germans don't know how to take care of their hay and, <laughs> but he would get so mad about that but he he would laugh he loved us to tease him about that oh we've had the best times with him and yeah. uh, Vic Graves was with us some just sometimes he traveled with us you oh, know yeah Vic was a good dude and him and <clears throat> him and Steve were real funny together all the time oh I, I know it so many times on stage they just lay off each other's uh, oh, you know lines oh I know I know you know uh I was telling somebody how uh, Steve, me and Steve had a little thing where, do you remember? Do you remember one time we we worked, we learned the whole song, uh, from the Square Dance from Bugs Bunny. You remember that? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Hillbilly. Dude, Harry. I remember it. I remember it because you all got started on that, and it wasn't long we had to stop for a bathroom break. Yeah, it was. It was funny because we learned that because because Steve. Me and Steve got where we would do that, and he would, you know, it was a part mm. about uh, grab your partner, hold her tight, and uh, 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 swing your partner, hold her tight. And, uh, I can't remember, but uh, uh, grab a fence post, hold it tight, and walk <laughs> your partner with all your might. That was it. That was, that was one of the lines. Just out of the blue, we'd be riding down the road, y'all, looking at each other, and one of you would say it. The way, the way it would start is Steve would go, do, 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 but you know something that reminded me of Steve uh, that was real funny is me and him, you know, we roomed together all the time. And I remember we looked out of the window. I think we may have been in Canada or something, but there was a big air conditioner on top <coughs> of uh, uh, this building. And it had the name of it. And the name of it was Munters, M-U-N-T-E-R-S. Okay. So that wasn't enough. You know, we go get in the car, and Steve look, and he'd say, "They misspelled that word up there, Phil." So that's that's mud, supposed to be monsters. So we would we would go down the road, and uh, we started noticing this. We would see these units that said monsters on it, 
And Steve would just look over at it and he'd say, man, he said, Fred Gwynn sure was a funny man, wasn't he? And, uh, uh, or he would say, he, he would say, uh, you know, Fred's making all the money. I wonder what Lily Monster is. But that, but that become monsters, you know. Uh, with oh Steve. yeah. Uh, but but he was like that. Everything was everything was funny. You and know? nothing got past him and you. You all could make a joke out of anything, and it'd be the funniest thing in the world. It was just an ongoing thing that nobody would get except the people in, in the in except, the car. You know, except the mm-hmm. same aged people in the van. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, Dale Ann, uh, is there anything you want to mention before we go? Uh, oh, I, honey, I appreciate getting to talk to you, and I love you. You know that. I and you too, I, I love everybody out there, and everybody just hang in there. We'll yep. get to hit a G run one of these days. <laughs> if I can remember how to hit one. It's been a while. I, it has. I went to slip my picks on the other day, and they wouldn't fit. They just kept sliding off, and I thought, oh, no. you know, uh, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's been a while. Maybe I've lost weight, or maybe my fingers have just shrunk. But oh. you know, it's it's funny. You can put them back on in about five minutes. They're, you know, they're right back adjusted. Yeah. Yep. But look now, we don't live that far apart. So I'm gonna call you right here on on the internet. I want us to get together. Yes, and, I do too, honey. And me and you have talked about we're wanting to go junk store hopping. That's our that's our big hobby together. He can find the best stuff. Well, we both I know when we've been out of town a few times that we would spot these little goodwills and things and I would say, Hey, you know, we need to go over there and, and I remember we didn't have time but uh I just want I just wanna see you and uh you know, well, I do you too. I'm, I miss you terribly. I do you too, buddy. It don't mean we, we can't get together, but I appreciate you uh, giving Matt a chance. I knew he was very qualified for well, that. Well, he sure is. He and, sure is. And I hope he's there for a while and, uh, and you don't fire him because of his dad. Uh, oh, <laughs> Lord, no. No, no, no. He's actually one of the founding members of the new band. It's Dale M. Bradley and Moonrunner. So he's a moon runner. Oh, is that, is, is that right? I didn't know that. That is, yeah. We'll runner. probably be doing some more about it, I guess, you know, but that's it. He's I, a, he's a. I like that, I like that name. You know, uh, I had a song on one of my albums uh, that I called Moon Racer. I remember that too. And, and what's funny is I got that name from, uh, from Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. <laughs> you did from the old one. Yeah, uh, you remember when he goes to the uh, when they all land, uh, Rudolph and Hermie, and they land on the island of misfit toys. Island of misfit toys. You're right. Well, the big flying lion on there. You know, it was it was that was kind of taken like the Wizard of Oz the way it was set up. You know, he had to come down the aisle and the big lion sitting there, and his name was King Moonraiser. It, uh, so I changed it a little bit to Moon Racer, and now you're, or did you say you're Moon Runner? Moon Runner. I like yes. that. That's a good name. You heard it was, here tonight. It, that's true. They they picked it out. We like all it. went through several names, and that's what they all chose. <laughs> I, I like that, Dylan. That's like a, a fresh start. Uh, too, you know? It, you, it is. It is. You, and it, you've done, you know, uh, which... You know, you've how many albums have you made? You know, I think including the ones with the with the, all the collaborations, I think there's fourteen. Wow, that's a bunch. Well, yeah. then you'll have a new set with a different name, so that's cool. Oh, yeah. it'll 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 definitely be different. But I hope everybody likes enjoys the new album. Something on there, I hope for somebody. You know, definitely. And, Definitely. I thank you, honey, and we love you so much, and I love everybody that's tuning in. Hey, that sounds good, Dylan. We'll see you guys, and you have a great night, and I uh, love you, okay? Love you, honey, and you have a great evening, too. I will. Thank you, buddy. Okay, honey. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right. Let me disconnect here. All right. Well, I know we rode a while with Dylan Bradley, but she's... It's funny. I've not saw. I haven't saw her in a while. So sometimes we just get off on tangents talking, and I forget sometimes that we're we're here on the air. But but you know, it's funny hearing stories from people who are regular people like Dale Ann, but who are are big stars in this music. And uh, you know, Dale Ann will never will never tell you, 
you know, uh, I mean, Dale Ann's a huge deal. And, and I didn't talk to her about this, but she was inducted into the Kentucky Country Music Hall of Fame just a few years back, and I meant to talk to her about that. But that's a big deal. I mean, there's a lot of people out of Kentucky, you know, Ricky Skaggs, Dwight Yoakam, uh, Patty Loveless, just so many, many people, uh, uh, Keith Whitley. That's, you know, that's just a few. I mean, Kentucky has turned out so many, and to have Dale Ann in there, uh, you know, as part of that, that's pretty awesome, I think. And uh, anyway, I'm going to hit a few here before I say goodbye. But let's see. Jeff Whitaker had fun tonight. Glad you were tuned in, buddy. Been a lot. And uh, and Kim Kasky says, Moon Runner. Cool, yeah. I like that name, too. But anyway, I uh, always talk about uh, inspirational stuff. And I did talk just a little bit about this with Dale Ann, but I, I want to talk a little bit more about it. The night that I went down to see Del Ann, I don't even know really why I took my, my dobro down. She asked me to. I knew I wasn't fit to play. It'd been, it'd been two years and I hadn't picked it up. But uh, she gave me a chance and uh, it, it, it it all, you know, it, it didn't feel right at first, but things started gelling a little bit. But I think Del Ann at the time, I know I didn't play very good the first night, but but she offered me a job and told me, you know, you, whenever you're ready to play, you got a job here. And that inspired me to really want to get well because I wanted to get back and play. But I was in between, in between things. I mean, I had been playing with the Whites, and uh, that's when I got sick. And from that point, two years. And, uh, you know, Dale Ann, you know, taking me in, she didn't have to do that because... You know, she she was they were making enough money as a four piece man, and she didn't need a fifth piece. But she brought brought me in, and uh, which I know Steve worked and helped me get that job. But you know, that's something right there that really inspired me because I I basically thought, you know, when you get cancer, things are done. So I had put aside playing music. And so many other things that I wasn't going to do that anymore, that I was finished with it. And it didn't turn out that way because, uh, you know, I was inspired and, and I know Dale Ann was led to, you know, offer me that job. And I stayed there for three years with her and uh, did play on a Pocket Full of Keys, which got a Grammy nomination. So I was very proud of that. But, you know, I, I think I would still been heading down that road pretty hard. I mean, I may be back playing by now. But if that night hadn't happened for, here's Dale Ann, you know, she she didn't need me, but she hired me and took a chance that I was going to get back, and I did. And, uh, you know, things like that inspire, inspire people. And sometimes when you're sick and you give up on things or, you know, things are going bad and ill or you're ill or whatever, sometimes you just need something like that, you know, from a friend to you know, say, hey, you know, I, I trusted you. I've got confidence in you, and I want to take you on board and, and uh, we'll play some music. Things like that are the things, I think, that really help us all to, to get better and stuff. You know, even with this COVID, and, and COVID affects everybody different, but, you know, with any kind of illness, even like that, you know, there's there's times with a lot of people that, you know, people say, well, you know, I don't have anything here to live for or I'm, you know, old or, or you know, whatever, and and I don't think I'll, I'll get through this. Well, you know, when I got my cancer, I was 49, and I, I wasn't, wasn't young, but I wasn't old. But, uh, you know, I knew, you know, the first few days it was like, I you know, I was just kind of blown away with all the stuff that was ahead of me, but I got a handle on it. And I said, I'm going to beat this. And I did. Uh, five years survive, five times survivor. I've been dealing with this 10 years, and I've been in remission for, for about two years now. And the drugs have really gotten good for cancer. So, you know, it's like that with a lot of things. So many illnesses that they've got so much good, good stuff that's, that's out there. But, you know, uh, I think one of the biggest things in my case was not so much drug, the drugs that they were giving me, which I know it was the drugs, 
but I think you know it, you can you can't get through this kind of stuff, major illness like this if you're if you're godless. You've got to really at a point, no matter what it is, you know, you get you get sick and and you start you know you start saying prayers, and sometimes it takes things like like an illness or something to kind of turn you around and get you pointed the right way, and it did me. Uh, with uh, with my life, I mean, I I look at things so much different than I used to, and I value things that used to be small stuff. Uh, everything's got a value, and it's not it's not um, always a money a money value. It's it's just just the value of uh, of what it is. And one thing with that with when I was sick, uh, the the one thing that you can't buy really it was was life. And uh, I, you know, I've heard people say, you know, if I could only buy buy more life, well, you know, that's something we can't do, but we can try to be healthy as much as we can. And I'm trying to do better, which I fall short on that a lot. But, but, uh, you know, when it's your time, it's going to be. But, you know, in the in the meantime, you know, I think there's always a plan for all of us. Which people will say, well, you know, I did this and. I extended my life a little bit. But it's like this with my cancer, you know, I just said, you know, I've made it 10 more years, but I didn't extend that. Uh, that, you know, I, I, this was planned out. This was the way my life was planned. This was going to happen. And then everybody's got a set time that you, that you die. It works that way. And it wasn't my time. Uh, we don't, we don't know when it'll be, but, uh, you know, the whole thing I just try to say is, you know, try to live right, especially during this COVID. Uh, you got a lot more time to sit around and read your Bible. I, when I first got sick, I decided I was going to read from front to back, and I did. And uh, I got finished, and it was just such an amazing thing. I went back and started reading it again. So, uh, anyway, this is a good time to, you know, to, to get yourself uh, healthy. And when I say healthy, not not body healthy, but healthy with your relationship between between you and the Lord. And a lot of people won't like me saying that, but that's true. I I believe Dale Ann does. Me, me and her used to talk about this a lot. Me and her and Steve Gully. Uh, I think that's what we like so much about playing together is we we laugh and cut up and all. But there was always a time too that that. Uh, you know, we would come to each other's room and pray for each other and stuff. And, and I miss that. But uh, I've been lucky to play with some really good bands that, uh, you know, the people that have a lot of faith. And, uh, you know, it's being six made me made me a better person. And uh, being six also made me value, you know, what life is and the important things. And it's not always about your bank account or, or how many dobros you own. It's a lot more than that. But I thank you for tuning in with me tonight. And again, uh, I want to just mention uh, the Gully family, uh, Debbie and Allie. It was so good to see you guys tuned in tonight. Uh, just, uh, you know, they will always be my family. M me and Lisa uh, look at them just like her, you know, Debbie, like a, like a sister and 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 Allie's like with me, kind of like like Matt, except she you know she's younger than Matt, but uh, but but she was Steve's daughter or is Steve's daughter, and then Matt's my my boy. So you know it's all it's all like a family, and I'm glad to be part of that Gully family. So anyway, you guys have a good night. I'll see you next week. Didn't mean to ramble on, but I I love talking to Dale Ann. She's she's a uh, She's a peach. And we will be here next week. I will find out and let you know who's going to be on the show. But I'm I'm working to try to to get uh I want I want people right now that uh you know that I've met and, and stuff that have interesting stories and uh and just like Dale Ann. I I'll have you somebody really good next week too. And uh I'm glad the sounds better this week. My my son and a few others kept saying, "Dad, we can't hear you." So uh, anyway, it sounds better tonight. So thanks for tuning in. Have a great night. God bless you. See you next week.
we're out of here.